Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with a young man, who awakens at the bottom of a stone well, next to a middle-aged man. When the man examines himself, he discovers a significant scrape on his skull. At this point, the man admits that he assumed the guy was dead. Then he considers how he got here. The young man looks around, there are moist stone walls all around him, and the sky can be seen high above his head through a round hole. He asks the man, perplexed, where they are. The other announces quietly that they are imprisoned in Doringham Castle's dungeon. The man, it turns out, has no idea why he was punished. In an attempt to learn more, the man inquires as to how he arrived. There is only one way to get here, the man says ominously. The man then inquires whether the neighbor witnessed how he arrived. Regrettably, he did not notice his appearance, because he was sleeping at the time. In turn, the prisoner inquires if the individual is from Doringham, and receives an affirmative response. The man is taken aback to discover that he has never met him before. He's seen foreigners at the blacksmith before, and this one appears to be a newcomer to town. Ironically, the man notes that the individual appears to have been pulled into the dungeon by the devil himself, through the air. Yet he is content with such companionship. He extends his hand, and introduces himself as William Fabishan. The befuddled man is not in a hurry to shake hands, and wants to first figure out what all these weird phrases mean, dungeon, castle, sentence. The man is taken aback, because the young man acknowledges that he is from Doringham, implying that he must know what is in store for him next. He leans back against the wall and takes a breather. The man takes another glance around, and discovers pieces of a damaged fence on the ground. He assembles the pieces and shouts joyfully, he recognized it, he had planned to surprise his wife before she arrived on Sunday. It was a gorgeous sunny day, so he drove to the city center and looked in three stores, before finding something good. He returned home and began erecting a garden fence. He stepped on the parapet, and it began to snow, the fence collapsed, and he plunged into the well. That's how he ended up in his garden in the backyard. The man does not accept his story and dismisses him as insane. He becomes enraged and asks the other what he forgot on his property. The man laughs, perplexed, unable to believe that the castle belonged to this storyteller. The interrogation continues as the man is asked how long he has been in the well. He says he has been here since last night. The young man then states that the man is no longer welcome in his garden. He tries to convince the man that he was upstairs, and that the dungeon is in the courtyard of the castle. For millennia, nothing but stone walls existed. A dog suddenly barks from above. The man begins calling his dog Spocky, but receives no reaction. The older man looks at his neighbor with sympathy, believing him to be insane. The man observes iron brackets protruding from the wall, and attempts unsuccessfully to reach them on his own. So he begs the man for assistance, and pledges to toss a rope down to him when he climbs out. His neighbor regretfully chuckles, and informs him that there are three additional dungeons enclosed by high walls. The victim was probably unconscious when they brought him here, so he didn't notice that each entrance was tightly guarded. Guards patrol the castle grounds with dogs and crossbows, and any effort to flee is considered insane. The guy refuses to trust the man's gibberish, and believes it was his dog barking upstairs. He has lived in this house for seven years, and is very familiar with it. The young man requests assistance once more, but the man is convinced that the young man has gone insane, and he himself is unwilling to act because he is hungry, and believes his end is near. The guy then decides to cheat, and offers food in exchange for assistance, but the older man again declines. He continues to persuade his neighbor, claiming that there is nothing but a small village upstairs. His wife won't return until next Sunday, and no one will be able to discover them until then, they must try to escape on their own. All the man has to do is press the guy's foot into the iron braces. The man grows enraged, and declares that he is already attempting to help the man survive. Earlier, his former cellmate had fled, but was apprehended by guards, who then used forceps to take out his tongue and gouge out his eyes. The guy tells the man to quit spouting gibberish, but a wild female scream is heard upstairs. The man begins to pray, and the fellow looks up, perplexed, trying to figure out what occurred. He comes to the conclusion that this is a ploy, and a terrible prank. He tries to communicate with the man, who takes him by the throat, and urges him to leave him alone. Then he resumes his prayers. A thunderstorm is brewing, and dark clouds are covering the sky. The man resolves to take action right away, and climbs onto a little stone ledge that crumbles beneath his feet. He begins to climb up with much effort after grabbing the projecting iron pin. The neighbor begs him not to attempt this, warning him that the dogs would be on him before he reaches the top. The man, on the other hand, continues to climb, and eventually crawls out, collapsing exhausted on the ground. 
Individuals dressed in white coats rush up to him. One of them grabs him by the shoulders and inquires about his whereabouts. He then dashes to the well, where he sees the second man. The orderly was given instructions to notify Dr. Greenberg that both missing people had been recovered. And he requests to bring a rope with him. The entire hospital had been searching for them since the morning. Soon, a doctor enters and attempts to determine how the well was opened. The orderlies explain that the cover was removed last week, and that a replacement has yet to arrive. An irate doctor orders that no patients be permitted to leave the yard until the well is closed. The man begins talking about his wife Sarah, but the orderlies remove him. The second man inquires whether he will be tortured. The doctor chuckles, and pledges not to torment him, leading him to his room. They stroll through the lawn, where the patients of the psychiatric facility walk alone, and one of the women occasionally lets out heartbreaking cries. And an elderly man on all fours barks like a dog in a very realistic manner. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.